So this is a wooden log with a Scotch yoke. It's pretty straightforward and what it does is turn rotary motion into linear motion. So at the back of the model I've got a handle. If I turn the handle then that slides backwards and forwards and equally if I slide that backwards and forwards it will turn that handle. So it will turn linear to rotary or rotary to linear and you actually find it all over the place. You find it used in engines, you find it used in power tools, you find it used in actuators. It's got a lot of uses. Of course you don't see it in this form very much. Quite often you see it as this flat panel. It's the same thing. If I take the centre pin out there, take out the slide, we'll see that we've just got a disc with the gear on the end. The disc goes on there, the slide goes in, there we go. And we have a pin that goes in the little hole. And now, when I rotate the gear, of course, this slides up and down. You find it like this in lots of power tools. So if we put a blade on there, for example, another blade on there, spin that with a motor. If I put the pin back in properly. <laughs> spin that with the motor. Then we get this up and down, and you find that in things like jigsaws and, of course, uh, what are they, carving knives and hedge trimmers, that sort of thing. So it's got a lot of uses. Now, based on what we did with this, remember there are quite a few mechanisms in this. And one of the mechanisms I thought was kind of cute, and I sort of came up with myself, was this ability to push this selector in and out, have it work a gear, and have that gear move that pin. And I thought, well... Could we do that with a scotch yoke? And of course the answer is yes, and here's how you do it. And here are the bits to do it. Now I will put this on as a project on Thingiverse, should anybody want to play with it. And I'll put this, which is the non-adjustable scotch yoke, as a separate project onto Thingiverse, should anybody want a driver for some kind of machine tool that they're after. Now in order to do this, we're going to use that rack and pinion system that we used when we did the CVT. The heart of it is this tiny piece here. You see it's got a gear at one end, a little hammerhead at the other, and then a shaft. That actually fits into this bit here, which will go into the central body. There's a small pin which goes through the gear, and that shoves in there to lock it into place like that. But before you do that, because it will all lock into place, we have to put the rack in. So you put the rack in from the top, leaving it at about three little teeth sticking out, and press that firmly into place. The next bit we have is this bit, which is actually the selector. And one side is an indentation, and the rack goes into that indentation and presses firmly in place. We've done that. If we hold that body and move that up and down, then what we should notice is this little hammerhead is waggling backwards and forwards. And that whole lot drops into that body there. It'll only fit in one way because of these slides. You put a spot of glue in there and drop that whole thing into the body. So when you've done that, as we pull this in and out, what it does is waggle that hammerhead in there. And then we take this here, which is the pin, and you'll notice it's got two slots in it. You drop that into the recess. There we go, like that. And then there's a cover plate here that goes on top and glues into place like that. When that's done, this goes into the centre here, just drops all the way in. Then the slide goes in place. And then this pin gets glued in there. Like that. Then when we've done that, we turn it over. And you can see we've got these two rings. One with the big hole, one with the little hole. Big hole on first, glue it into place. Little hole on after the big one's glued in place. Okay, so when we've finished with it, we get something like that. This operates as a selector that can use a fork to push it in and out, and obviously have a gear there that would engage. And when the gear turns, everything turns, and so the fork would have to be like that. But when it's at its maximum, of course, what we get is the maximum throw of the Scotch yoke, and that works really quite nicely. However, if we then push that selector all the way in, then what we get is... Sorry zero throw. So we've got a range from zero out the way to its maximum that we can modify that scotch yoke with using this 
particular mechanism. Now, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with that, but it is the basis of the Max Zero, which is another kind of CVT drive that actually uses a Centrix. And this is kind of an eccentric if you think about it. So we could make a CVT out of it, but the mechanism itself, I think, is mildly interesting because I've never seen it anywhere before. So I thought I would do that because it's an extension of this, really, using that mechanism where we're using a rack and pinion to change the throw of something that we're actually turning. I hope it was of interest. I will put this on to Thingiverse. Uh, if it inspires somebody, I'd love to know what you build with this mechanism. I might think about a CVT out of this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.